Hi everyone. Let's take a look at number fourteen on page four hundred and forty-four for grade twelve calculus and vectors. The lines x minus y plus one equals to zero, and x plus ky minus three equals to zero have an angle of sixty degrees between them. For what values of k is this true? So step one, you can draw a diagram. There are two lines, and of course, you can draw them if you want to use a Cartesian plane. That's fine. But basically, if you really think about this, there's an angle. Let's call this angle theta. It's going to be 60 degrees. And this could be, for example, x minus y plus 1 equal to 0. This second line is going to be x plus ky minus 3 equals to 0. Now, again, think about this in terms of direction vector. What I mean is if you think about x minus y plus 1 equal to 0, you can bring negative y to the right. So this is going to be y equal to x plus 1. So again, this means the slope is going to be 1. How do we know that? Again, 1, x means 1 is the slope, or 1 over 1, which implies the direction vector is going to be 1, 1. So again, for your reference, 1, 1 just means you go right by 1, up by 1. There's a direction vector for that first line. Now, in a different color in a moment, I'm going to follow the same um, structure for you. So again, I could say ky equals to negative x plus 3. So I bring x minus 3 to the right, which becomes opposites in terms of sign. The opposite of multiplying by k is to divide by k. So y equals to negative 1 over k times x plus 3 over k. Again, the slope is negative 1 over k, which means, again, for your reference, if I grab a different color for you, the corresponding direction vector is going to be k negative 1. So let me grab a different color. I'll put a box around this. k negative 1 means you can go either left or right by k, depending on the value of k and you have to go down by 1. So this could be one representation, for example. Now, the key is, what is k? So think about dot product. Let's grab a different color. So by definition, if you think about the dot product, cosine theta equals to, for example, a dot b divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. When I say a, I mean vector a. When I say b, I mean vector b. So in this context, I take the dot product of 1, 1, with k negative 1, and I divide this by the magnitudes of 1, 1 times the magnitude of k negative 1. Now, again, on the left-hand side, if I think about this, angle theta is given to be 60 degrees, so just like that. Now, if you'd like, you can grab a calculator. I'm going to do a little bit of mental math. Cosine of 60 degrees is exactly 1 over 2. On the right-hand side, if you think about the dot product, 1 times k, plus 1 times negative 1, divide this by the square root of 1 square plus 1 square times the square root of k square plus negative 1 square, just like that. Now let's keep going. 1 over 2 equals to, again, k minus 1 divided by root 2 times the square root of k square plus 1. Now if you like, you can cross multiply. Um, you can also cross out the root 2, actually. If you think about 2, by the way, isn't 2 the same as root 2 times root 2? So what that means is you can cross out a common root 2. Now again, if I cross multiply, then I get the square root of k square plus 1 on the left, because 1 times the square root of k square plus 1 is itself. On the right, it's going to be root 2, don't forget the brackets, times k minus 1. Now, I'm going to erase some of this. So I can save a bit of space. And let's keep going. We're going to solve this, everybody. So I go back. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to square both sides in a moment. So this is the square root of k square plus 1, which equals to root 2 k minus root 2. The opposite of a square root is to square both sides. Maybe I'll use a different color for your reference. Careful here, because mathematically speaking, when you square both sides, sometimes you get additional answers. And these additional answers may work mathematically, but may or may not make sense physically. Keep that in mind. 
So k squared plus 1 equals 2. I square the first term, 2k squared. I square the last term, that's going to be 2. And I take minus 2 times the product of root 2k and root 2. So what that means is you get k squared plus 1, which equals to 2k squared. 2 times root 2 times root 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. So minus 4k uh, plus 2. I can bring everything to one side. So 2k squared minus k squared, that's going to be k squared. I can cross that out to stay organized. Minus 4k. If I think about 2 and I bring the 1 to the other side, so 2 minus uh, 1 is going to be 1. And now my goal is to solve for k. To solve for k, again, in general, you can try factoring or you can use the quadratic formula. So again, I want to write all this on one whiteboard for you. So I'm erasing some of this. And we're going to apply the quadratic formula. Here we go. So if you think about the quadratic formula in the most general form, don't forget x equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So if I go back, and I'm going to draw an arrow here, using this idea, this means k equals to, again, for your reference, a is 1, b is negative 4, c is going to be 1. So negative b is going to be negative, negative 4, plus or minus, square root of, in brackets, negative 4 square, minus 4 times 1, times 1, divided by 2 times 1. Now, here comes the final answer, 4 plus or minus square root. If you think about this, this is going to be 16 minus 4. That's going to be 12, all over 2. Now, don't forget to reduce this. So, for example, when you think about 12, that's 4 times 3. So, this is really 4 plus or minus. Again, 4 times 3 means the square root of 4, which is 2, root 3. So, now, here comes the final answer, which I'll put a box around. So, you can divide the top and the bottom by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is going to give you 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to give you 1. And here comes that final answer. k is going to be exactly 2 plus or minus root 3. Now, how do we know this makes sense? How do we know there are two cases and not one? So this is where I would strongly suggest you double check a little bit by going back to the diagram and you're thinking, OK, this is my answer. And if I look at this, what happens when k is 2 plus root 3? What happens when k is 2 minus root 3? And I would say the general answer is when you think about the direction vector, it could point either way. So even though in blue I pointed this way, you could have pointed in the opposite way. So opposite vectors, same magnitude, opposite direction, which would still give you the same line. If you find this video meaningful, it's adding value to your math life. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this makes sense.